there is something greater than Jonah here. In the ritual of our Hebrew brethren, great honor is given physically to the law, the Torah. It is kept in a big handwritten scroll, very richly ornate and would adorn in a kind of tabernacle affair which is at the center point of the synagogue. And it is brought out there at the culmination of their celebration and it is then proclaimed and they are protecting the sacred text with a pointer as the sweat of the finger touched the handwritten page and writing. That is therefore in a sense, our point of reference, for we also have our roots in common, the same inspired word we honour. And part of our ritual in the first part of the Mass comes indirectly from that, at least by instinct. For if you look at the first part of the celebration, it is actually of Judaic origin. The order, however, is obviously reversed, and the Gospel itself is the high point for us. Now, when they come to this inspired word, they treat it with great care. Whole rabbinic schools commenting, analyzing, and transmitting. This then is to be borne in mind as we come in contact with any aspect of our faith. First of all, the written, that discipline of having Lectio Divina in our day, when we expose ourselves to being addressed and challenged by the Spirit of our God, breathing over the page and bringing the word to life, and also by the directly sacramental sphere, which is, of course, even more intense, but is there God himself. When it comes to the encounter at the altar, it is no longer just words, it is a presence, and God himself comes in. Therefore, there should be not less but more in the way of protection and ritual, not less but more in the way of receptivity, preparation and thanksgiving, not less but more in the whole realm of pacified deception, which means in practice silence. Silence. Now, in that silence, every word also is able to resonate. And in that, we need to be aware that words are coming to us, not only in the sacred text, but also <coughs> through the Magisterium, we pray especially in this week for what is going on in the Vatican, that we may truly be given a word for our time and nothing in any way attacked or infiltrated by other sources. But also we have within our Catholic life, in common also as it happens with our Eastern brethren, other interventions which are not to be treated lightly either. I am talking about privileged moments where it's always happened that heaven has actually intervened, given us words, given us here signs, not the sign of Jonah, but it could often be the sign of Our Lady. We have many interventions in the Marian context, hence it is that I would like to look at a few of these today, the 13th of October. By the end, you realize why. We need, therefore, to let the Spirit discern for us through the magisterium of the Church. Those series of apparitions and events which are recognized as authentic are safe. We don't have to believe them, but we can be safe in believing them. So we'll stay within that domain, and we'll look at two or three just to see if there is a word for our time. In 1980, we have this event in the life of, I know, a saint, John Paul II. In November of that year, he visited Germany at the Cathedral of Fulda. That is the place where St. Boniface is buried, the monastery he himself founded and it is the place where the bishops meet. And there he spoke of the third secret of Fatima, 
to a small group. He was asked why the secret had not yet been revealed, and he gave some answers. First, the Pope said it has not been revealed because with this knowledge comes responsibility. And so many people just want to know for reasons of curiosity. So, in order to avoid sensationalism, he did not want to reveal the context of the third secret. <coughs> but then, he also said, it is enough for you to know that entire regions of the earth will be inundated with water overflowing large regions of the earth and millions will die from one moment to the next. <coughs> but is there any other reason why he did not wish to make it known? This is fairly soon after he was made Pope, remember. That is why these bishops are pumping him when they got him for the first time in private. It seems that he did not want to encourage the communists to take certain steps. Now remember what years we're in, 1980, those who remember the tension there in that period. What steps was he perhaps referring to? We can surmise very clearly that one thing that would encourage the communists it would have been a revelation that they would actually win were there a question of a worldwide conflict, as there was a strong danger in 1980 with those missiles being pointed at Europe and so on. Now, the question is, was this conversation going on at Fulda actually true historically? Some people have questioned whether Pope John Paul II actually made those statements about the Third Secret at Fulda. But that objection cannot be sustained. First of all, there was a lady journalist who took down all the Holy Father's words and published a transcript in a magazine called Stimme des Glaubens, Voice of the Faith. The Vatican has never questioned the accuracy of the quotations in that article. Then there was a second witness, a German priest, who also wrote down, word for word, what the Pope had said on that occasion. And afterwards he told the Pope he had done this, and the Pope thanked him for it. Now, Father Kramer, or Kramer is the one who is giving this account, and he says here, I speak and read German myself, and I read the German text prepared by the German priest when I was travelling near Fulda back in 1983. The mother superior of a German community of nuns showed me the text, and it was identical to the text that had been published by the lady journalist. So, the German priest and the lady journalist gave identical testimony concerning what the Pope said at Fulda. So either they took it down in shorthand or else had tape recorded the Pope's address. But word for word, the texts were identical. So I don't think there can be any serious challenge to the authenticity of the Pope's remarks at Fulda. Let's make a jump. Have you heard of what happened in 1634? It happened in Ecuador. It is approved and therefore safe. And it's referred to as the series of apparitions of Our Lady of Good Success. In this apparition, our Lady warned of precisely what the third secret 
seems to be predicting. Our Lady told Venerable Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres that in the late 19th century and throughout most of the 20th century, the Church would yield to a great heresy. The sacrament of matrimony will be attacked and profaned. And that's to be borne in mind as our bishops are discussing this whole question right now in Rome. And masonry, which will then be in power, will enact iniquitous laws with the objective of doing away with this sacrament, making it easy for everyone to live in sin, encouraging the procreation of illegitimate children born without the blessing of the Church. Then, our Lady warned, the Christian spirit will rapidly decay, extinguishing the precious light of faith until it reaches the point that there will be an almost total and general corruption of morals. And this will result in the lack of priestly and religious vocations. And Our Lady also warned that during this time innocence will almost no longer be found in children, nor modesty in women, and that the secular clergy will, live, will leave much to be desired, because priests will become careless in their sacred duties. Lacking a prelate and father to guide them with paternal love, gentleness, strength, wisdom and prudence, many priests will lose their spirit, placing their souls in great danger. Another jump. We go to 1973, Akita, Japan. Our Lady appeared in a series of apparitions approved as authentic by the local bishop after eight years of investigations. Most tellingly, Cardinal Ratzinger, as prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, himself adjudged the apparitions worthy of belief in 1988. And he was clearly aware of these apparitions when he gave an important interview to the Jesus magazine. Now, we have here an interesting detail. The Catholic World News reported on October the 11th, 2001, that Howard D., former Philippine ambassador to the Vatican, said in a 1998 interview with Inside the Vatican, it's a magazine, that Bishop Ito, the local bishop of Akita, was certain Akita was an extension of Fatima. And Cardinal Ratzinger personally confirmed to me that these two messengers of Fatima and Akita are essentially the same. The same Catholic World News story further noted that both Bishop Ito and Cardinal Ratzinger declared the messengers and events in Akita to be of supernatural origin and labelled them worthy of belief. <coughs> so, what do we have? Our Lady of Akita said to Sister Agnes Katsuko Sasakawa on October the 13th, this very day, 1973, the anniversary of the miracle of the sun, Fatima, these words. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. 
Uh, do you remember the details of that great miracle of Fatima? It was perceived as a peril. People started to scream. They thought that the sun was coming close to the earth and going to hit it, which is a sort of vision of nuclear power coming close to the earth and going to burn it, because the sun is a continuous atomic reaction. Fission is a huge amount of energy coming from a change on the level of molecular power. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one we'll never have seen before. Now here we are. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priests nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will envy the dead. <coughs> now this bit is for us this evening. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary, the rosary, and the sign left by my son. He said that when the Lord returns, we will see the victorious cross in the sky. In fact, the Lord said so in the Gospel, they will see the sign of the Son of Man, remember? Each day, now that's interesting, because the one thing that is constant in all six apparitions of Fatima is this very same message. Each day, recite the prayers of the Rosary. It's often been asked, why was that asked for and not daily mass? Well, the answer is not that difficult. It's the one thing that every single human being can do. The other one would be dependent on the state of life, time, geography, and many other factors. This no one can have an excuse for. If there's goodwill, we can get those five mysteries in. And also, if possible, make it a celebration. Because there's a big difference between getting through something and living it as an experience of shared prayer. But that, by the way, was what the Holy Spirit was trying to say to the churches through John Paul II when he gave the encyclical on the rosary. When he wanted, and he gave indications how it could be done, that the rosary be genuinely a vibrant celebration. It could be done with little words. From I just first, this weekend I was given an example, it came from Italy, a little booklet with little verses for each decade. It can be done. If one is doing the rosary, there are whole little, little things which make it vibrate and not just be a repetition of prayer, I mean words. Singing, for instance, the Gloria Patria or whatever, or Ave Ave at the end of the decades, things which can make it live. Some of you here were at those things that we used to have at Kilnacrot, when we used to have these night vigils, and things would happen in these beautiful long vigils when hundreds of people were together. Our Lady was there, and we could feel her presence, things would happen. She likes the rosary well celebrated, and they were well celebrated there. The great power. By the way, it's not indifferent either the way that materially it happens. It's important that people say it at the same speed, not one pulling or one pulling back. Otherwise it's disharmony and it's not able... If you try to pray while somebody else is going too quick, you can't really even form the words in your mind. It's just psychologically impossible. It's important to do it at the same speed and it should be a natural speed, not a forced speed. You talk to heaven as you talk to each other. You mean the words. With the Rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops and priests. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the Church in such a way that one will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops against bishops. The priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confrères. Churches and orders sacked. The Church will be full of those who accept compromises, and the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. 
he loves to see a priest leaving because it, all the sacraments that he would have celebrated will not be celebrated. All the sins that he would have absolved will not be absolved. And so on it goes. And the same with marriage. He loves to see a family breaking up. There are all kinds of interesting consequences for him. And it's very difficult to find vocations in families which were not stable. Now, Cardinal Ratzinger admitted to the former Vatican ambassador to the Philippines that the message of Fatima and the message of Akita are essentially the same. Now, Cardinal Ratzinger also was being pumped and pressurized to leak something because he was one of the few who had read Third Secret. And therefore, we see what's going on. He's not saying, but he's hinting. I make one last jump. In 1961, Our Lady is reported to have had also communication with Sister Elena Aiello who died in 1961. She was very renowned for the revelations that she received from Our Lady and was greatly esteemed by Pope Pius XII. Our Lady revealed to her that Russia would wage a sudden war, would overrun all of Europe. And this article comments, this, it would seem, is clearly what Pope John Paul II wanted to avoid by not divulging <coughs> the third secret. As he said at Fulda, because it would encourage the communists to make certain moves, in other words, to wage war against the West. <coughs> One has but to navigate a little bit on the cybersphere to see the potential for cosmic conflict simmering right now with alliances between Russia and China as a big block and then Islamic alliances across the planet as well and one big country linked to another like the close link between Israel and the states and we can see that there's power behind certain buttons. Where does that leave us? There is more going on than meets the eye, politically, but also in the spiritual sphere. Satan is waging a battle right now <coughs> in the air of gigantic proportions it would seem that he knows that his time is limited. You know what happened to Leo XIII when he was given this mystical experience revealing that there was going to be a century of great satanic movement. Satan was wanting more time and more power to destroy the church. He was going to be given a certain attitude for God's own glory. There would be a complete re-establishment, but we are still, it would seem, in this period of satanic activity. We don't know for how long it's going to go on like this, but just be aware, it's actually <coughs> around everywhere, on our screens, on the cybersphere, even, alas, in our pulpits. I'm getting echoes of things going on in missions and novenas where very strange things are happening in the pulpit and in church infiltration to see what we're at and the lay people are not able to react because their faith has been so weakened that they're not able to smell a rat. So be faithful to what you know to be right, be faithful to the rosary, be faithful to the grace that is there because grace is always grace and don't abuse it even if others are. It's not necessarily the best to go more than once to Holy Communion in the day but it is the best to have a long time of thanksgiving and preparation when people allow us to be in peace. 
choose your celebration and the time of it so as to have the maximum of profit from this encounter with heaven. And their doing, console your God and let these moments be vertical and not horizontal. For otherwise what is happening is that our places of prayer are becoming places of human entertainment. Mm -hmm.